This is Muta Baruka. We want to present to you a wholesome kind of level of consciousness right now. So subscribe and tell your friend them. This is Muta Baruka. This is the cutting edge and the Black Radar YouTube channel. Hit that subscribe button and keep listening. Okay, cutting edge. You know we're gonna play some things tonight. Uh, we we want to hear them because we select them specially to really put certain level of thought and thinking in our head. Because we really need it. We need we need some different level of consciousness here right now. The way the thing I go. It's like them dumb pan with fast, fast, fast. You know, little while as I turn on my computer, all I could have seen is the, the pride flag. <laughs> they not easy. As I turn on the computer, you know. I see this whole heap of pride flag and what pride means and why the colors and uh, we need we need some level of consciousness here right now more than ever before. Yeah man, they might tackle from every different level. Yes. Man talking about the discrepancy between the rich and the poor, between the private sector and the public. And we can even extend that into Jamaica. When we look on even the church, the church almost come like a private sector organization. We can collect money to do things to build up only the church, a lot of them. So we need to understand how the thing are work against the people them. All of the, the institutions where the Western world develop through for them history and culture. How it benefit them and don't benefit us. And we have to be struggling now to figure out this and figure out that. And the more we figure it out is the more we, is 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 the less we become myself. The more we figure it out, because what we're using is for them ideas to validate our figuring out ourselves. Which we had ideas before, but them lick it out of it so much that we can't find it back like that. It's like a, as them usually say, legal in a ear stack. Very difficult to find. You know, you drop, you have a sand in your hand and you drop it in the sand. More than likely, you will never find that individual sand that you had in your hand. It's a serious thing. A very serious thing. We as African people need to formulate and design our own reality. And we keep saying it on this program yeah. We keep saying it. It's not that joke business. Because the things are not working out for you. You don't see it. It not work out for you, Rasta. One and two people get through the, the little crevice and the little pee, peace hole. But that's it. The majority of way still have to try to figure out things where we now have to figure it out because what we are trying to figure out is not of us. It's just to make them get richer and bigger and better and more power. It's all about power. The man them have the most power. Sometimes it's not the richest man them, but them combine with the rich man them to really give way hell on earth. So we just have to say it's time again for wake up. How much time am I going to tell you for wake up? What a sleepy yeah, sleep, man. Terrible sleep. Listen carefully. All the ones in America who are listening to me now, who are going to listen to me on YouTube, take heed of that clip a while ago. Take heed of that clip. And not because you're not in America, it don't affect you because supermarket full up of foreign things. Yeah, man, full up of foreign things. So we need to take heed. We're not playing them things just to play sick, you know. We're playing to make you wake up. Like this one. Late fashion designer Coco Chanel once said a woman who cuts her hair is about to change her life. A new study out of the U.S. suggests the pursuit of perfect hair could actually be impacting our health. Researchers looked at 18 hair products sold in the U.S. and traditionally used by black women, like hair relaxers, hot oil treatments, anti-frizz or leave-in conditioners. Every product they looked at contained endocrine-disrupting chemicals, or EDCs. That, mean, that means they uh, interfere with the way our bodies produce hormones, and many of those products are actually banned in Europe. And what's of particular concern is how few of those compounds are listed as product ingredients, and that makes it difficult for users to know exactly what they're putting on their hair and scalp. Well, the study is published in the journal Environmental Research. Tola Okogu is a hair care blogger and author. She's with me. Her children's books explore the relationship between girls and their hair. And joining us from Boston, Massachusetts, is the study author, Dr. Jessica Helm, a scientist at the Silent Spring Institute. Jessica, I'm going to come to you first to talk about the 
health problems that you found black women tend to have uh, more than other women in the US? There was, there was something that stood out for you here. Yeah, thanks for having me. So uh, we know from previously published research that uh, black women have higher rates of uterine fibroids, of infertility, earlier onset of puberty, as well as rising rates of endometrial and breast cancers. And did you find a link with the kind of chemicals that are in the hair products we talked about? So what we found was that endocrine disrupting chemicals were frequently present in these products. We know that uh, endocrine disrupting chemicals are present in people's bodies, that some of the same chemicals that are in these products are in women's bodies frequently. Um, and we know that they have effects at high doses. Our study wasn't set up to specifically uh, answer the fact, uh, the question of whether or not these chemicals were directly influencing health, but the fact that these chemicals are, are frequently found in these products was of concern to us. Let's pick up that concern with Tola, because I know you not only act as a hair care coach, you're aware of what's on the market now, yes. um, but you've been aware of, over years, the kind of products that have been used by black women to, to care for or tame or however you want, you want to put it, your hair. Yeah, and um, with black hair, it naturally requires a lot more products than any other hair type because it's drier and it also requires more lubrication. So black women do tend to use a lot of products in one session, so they'll layer products. Um, and historically, the products that we buy, they are, I've been aware for a while that the ingredients are on the cheaper end and the brands it does appear to be quite low quality products and most of the products are bought in hair shops in areas where the demographic is majority black and a lot of products traditionally have come in from the states yes they have um, historically I mean I've been using hair products obviously for a long time and when I was young my mother used to relax my hair with little relaxer box kits that were directly imported from the US so historically most of our products do come from the US and Jessica there there is another concern which is not often the ingredients aren't fully listed so it's hard to know what you're dealing with when you buy these products that's right yeah we actually found that um, the majority of our the, the chemicals that we detected weren't listed on the ingredient label uh, we did find that parabens tended to be better labeled but they were by no means always labeled um, fragrance chemicals tended to be labeled with the word fragrance but the actual ingredients within those fragrances were not listed on the label do you think Jessica that black women who use these products that are directed at them as a, as a market should be worried about their health because of this? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, from a precautionary approach, I think it makes sense to um, reduce exposures to products that have chemicals that may cause harm and where there are opportunities to reduce that exposure. I think it makes sense to do that. Tyler, what do you think about that? I agree. I agree completely. A few years ago when I became more ingredient conscious in terms of the products that I use and I kind of pick my products looking at the ingredients list and I've become more familiar with some of the chemical names, I have moved to more organic products and there are more products in the marketplace, a lot more UK manufacturers and as the trend has moved towards more natural hair, so have the products. So women are being more conscious about what is in the products they're using on their hair and skin and they're being more careful and picking products that are either more organic or have less cosmeceuticals and more natural oils, etc. And Tola, I'm interested in the fact that you speak to a younger audience as well. I mean, partly because of your coaching, but also the children's books. I think we can show some of the, the front covers of the books that, that you've published and are about to publish. Yeah. And hair care is a massive issue. It is. It, it's something that speaks to the heart of identity for a lot of black women and black girls. Um, it, hair isn't just hair for us. It's the number one signifier of our race and it is very much tied into our race and how we view ourselves. And historically, our hair has been something we've kind of felt ashamed of and felt was inferior. So my books kind of are about celebrating black hair, black skin, black beauty, and hopefully helping a new and younger generation that's coming up develop a love for their hair and what is naturally coming out of their heads. And Jessica, just a, a final thought from you. I mean, the Silent Spring Institute, that makes me think about environmental awareness from the 60s on. And do you perceive that people now are much more concerned about ingredients and environment, especially when it comes to something so intimate as hair? Yeah, I think that there is, within some areas of society, there's some awareness, but I think by and large people are generally unaware of uh, the chemicals that are in their products and the potential that those chemicals might have to, ha cause, to cause harm. Well, Jessica, I think that's, that's an important warning. And Turner, I suppose that's part of the, the education that needs to be done. Yeah, but our, my advice about would be educate yourself. Get to know some of the more common dangerous ingredients like parabens and even silicon oils. And some of the products you listed are commonly used. So if you educate yourself, it's, you can avoid it. And as I said, there are more products in the marketplace, so there is more choice and more variety. Yes. I hope you're listening, you know, because them things are... Yeah, you're going to put things in your head, you know, and then look more. You say, well, you know, similarly, you move to a place something one well, long, long time. And it happened to me now. Yes. You know, I say time and time again, you know. The problem with black woman have a whole heap of time is not with the black man, you know. Yeah, sometimes 
you know, say black man has too much problem is the problem where black woman have is with them ear. They don't know what to do with it because it is not looking like a Caucasian woman. So them find out it's not a different way if you get rid of all them ear. Naturally look. And you can see it when you walk on the road. You can see it when you walk on the road that them don't really know what to do with them ear. You know, see it? So it's big, big problem to the black woman. Big problem. Listen. It is everywhere. We need it. We want it. We even find it in places where we wouldn't expect it. When researchers examined the stomach of a beached sperm whale in 2012, they found 30 square meters of tarpaulin, a four and a half meter long hose, a nine meter long plastic rope, and two flower pots. How is this possible? On average, a European uses and disposes of more than 100 kilograms of plastic per year. A large part of plastic waste ends up on huge landfills or in the sea. Today, more than 100 million tons of plastic is drifting around the oceans. Due to particular currents in the Pacific Ocean, a new continent has been born. A mass of plastic waste the size of Europe. In some areas of the oceans, there is up to 60 times as much plastic as there is plankton. Because plastic does not rot, it lasts up to 500 years. Through exposure to sun, wind, water, plastic is broken down into microscopic parts. These plastic particles can absorb high concentrations of agricultural and industrial toxins. Many animals mistake the plastic for plankton and eat their fill. Every year more than 100,000 turtles, marine mammals and seabirds die a slow and painful death because they starve with a full stomach or because their intestines rupture. Other marine creatures in whose cells plastic and toxins have accumulated end up as seafood on our plates. The smallest form of plastic are microplastics. They are added to cosmetics, shower gels and toothpastes. A tube of toothpaste contains up to 10% microplastics. The sewage plants cannot filter microplastics, so they too end up in the sea. In the making of plastic, hazardous chemicals are used in order to enhance elasticity of fire resistance. Bisphenol A, plasticizers and flame retardants are contained in almost every plastic product. Through exposure to heat, the wrong detergents or simply over time, plastic will go brittle, thus releasing these chemicals, which in turn, through the airways, ingestion or through mere touch, find their way into the human body. The consequences are severe. They include increased risk of cancer, asthma, infertility and developmental disorders. The plastic industry tries to cover up any scandals and runs a gigantic lobbying campaign in order to prevent stricter laws or inquiries. Plastic factories are veritable fortresses. The plastic production process are tightly kept secret. This is one of the reasons why no one is exactly sure what substances are added to the plastic. Over the course of the last 10 years, only 11 chemical substances could be analyzed out of a total of 100,000 possible additives. But there is hope yet. Intelligent robot nets, or fishing boats, converted to floating recycling factories, are intended to cleanse the oceans. Bioplastic, made of maize or starch, could replace conventional plastic. However, its production consumes valuable food, so it's no solution for satisfying the global demand for plastic. This is why you must radically change your consumption behavior. Pay attention to the packaging of products. Substitute paper or cloth bags for plastic bags. Don't throw away old plastic, but recycle it and use plastic-free products. Are we going to allow the destruction of the earth to continue? If we act now, there may still be hope for future generations, before the miracle material definitely turns on its creator. Yes, plastic, plastic, anywhere you turn nowadays it is a plastic. One of the most dangerous weapons that is used against human beings, killing yourself like how the gunman kill people. We feel, we, we think that the gunman is the most dangerous thing, you know. But most of the time, the gunman have to wheel by your outer road or in the streets. Meanwhile, you carry the poison in your house voluntarily without any pressure. You carry the danger in your house. And we're saying it over and over and over again and again and again. You are carrying dangerous things in your house and put it in your kitchen it is killing us slowly 
but surely, why is it that black people are only for the disease them, where it is very common, only affect black man and black woman? You know, them say the bleeding cause of dead monks, black man is prostate cancer. How is it that black people get prostate cancer more than white man? We want to mention something I saw, and this is a thing that going up next month soon, I got Ital Fest. Them call it the Ital Fest. It's going to keep right on the innocent and we different, what we call vegetarian chefs will be presenting them way of cooking. And you're going to have a raw food, you're going to have cooked food, you're going to have a stage show and all these things. So we want to look out for that. That is going to be very nice to go to. We you see different vegetarian food for those of you who want to figure out how vegetarian food tastes. You know, because you have some people say, if no meat, no you night, them not eat it. Yeah. They, they must say, why well, food can't, food have to have meat. <laughs> and no salt. And drink have to have no sugar. Them can't really deal with it that way there. So this is the opportune time to go and see how different ones look about food in a different way. But maybe you can go home and try some of them too. Yeah, maybe you can go home and try some of the dishes. Very, well, I don't remember how much it would mean, but most of my life, I eat certain way and sugar and meat and all them things, they don't really come near me. And I grow up picking them that way there and them they about still and for them picking grow up and them they about still. I mean, still they about, I don't have no major hospital woes. I don't know what will happen later down, but for the time being, we continue that journey. I would feel it's a great journey to not be killing animals to survive. Yes, it's great to know that you don't have to kill animals to survive because we are not made to eat flesh. You know, we are not carnivorous creatures. Carnivorous creatures don't chew them food, them cut and swallow. <laughs> we chew it like cow. And look how do we eat flesh neither. But you're big and fat. Big and fat. Some people physically can't live without their meat and say, after their meat. I don't know where people get them things from, you know. Oh, you can't go live without your after their meat, Rasta. And some man become gluttonous. Become gluttonous because him feeds the meat is something where supposed to eat how did man become so glutton after him is the last him is the last thing we appear upon earth i will say it all the while whether you is a creationist or believing in the bible or an evolutionist or believing in a charles darwin the two of them tell you say man or human beings is the last thing to appear on earth yet still him come now come and dominate the earth and something that comes to dominate him, you know, just like how him dominate God. Yeah, because I can't creation is God create man. And now man I take over the place and I go like him. He might do what he's supposed to do. And now you see man make AI. And AI I come now for come take over from him. I mean, the man called Peter Touch and the ganja. And you know, we don't hear them talk about the ganja thing again, you know. Every time you see it come up a little bit. And then them ease off. And then come up a little bit and them ease off. We don't know what's happening over that side because they have so much confusion going on in the island, you know, that that now come like a little thing. <laughs> yeah, that the, the, the ganja thing now come like a little thing. So that we take Ghana back page, you know, back of the class until something else happen for them really recognize it. But Jamaica is full of different things and different things are going on. A serious thing. It's a serious thing that go on in the computer, you know. I tell the people them where I pop up on my computer, you know. Every time something pop up about Pride, Pride Day, Pride Month, with the, the LGBT, watch that again, see the LGBTQ um, colors pop up every minute on my computer. So we say the government in a tight grip because them do a poll and it assures uh, the PNP catch them up. And then they must say, I lie that. 
Well, you know, say so anyone with their back always have the loudest voice say a lie, the polls are at a top. So that is a big thing now. <laughs> Every week, that is a big thing now, where the two parties them are, are leaking against one another because one has say the polls don't make no sense. And the other one has say, a true no, no, she say, we are catching up, we are catching up. The problem I have with it is that are the two same party them are run for the same position to do the same thing to the people them. No better every no better barrel. Two headed dragon. One body, two head, chop off one head. The dragon still alive. No matter which one of the head them. So them a fight. Them a fight, but it never make no difference to the people them, because the people them still up on the road and realize say, hey, nothing now go on for them. Nothing really now go on for them. So we will see how oh, they are going to deal with that. So trust me. So make a play this instead. Christianity and Islam by nature, they are bullies of African culture. It is expressed in their intolerance of other people who believe differently from who they are. So here's a simple example. If a Muslim walks into this village, the first object is to build a mosque and make everyone in that village a Muslim. Mm -hmm. It changes your timetable of waking up. You wake up at five, changes your fashion, how you work, changes the way you bury your loved ones. Now you must do everything according to Islamic law. The same thing is true with Christianity. Christianity walks into a space, first thing they want to do, as a Zulu, as a closer, you take off your shirt and put on your beautiful beads, mm -hmm. Hebrew beads, by the way, which are Jewish. <laughs> you put on your Hebrew gear, which is traditional, and you walk up to church. Christianity will look at you, we, though now there's a bit of tolerance. Mm -hmm. But the, the first glance is, is unacceptable. Because the God that Christianity has does not have tolerance for culture. Does not. Rather, I would rather take off that thing, I put on your shirt, you put a tie on you, put a jacket, polish your shoes and says, now you look nice. <laughs> because apparently you must become European first mm. before you can become Christian. In, in order for God to accept you, he cannot accept you in your authenticity. He, he needs first to take you through the culture of the dominant culture, which is a colonial culture, before you can actually become an acceptable Christian. I, I, an intelligent conversation needs to take place where we say, is everything that we are doing in the Christian church, Christian, or some of the things, norms and rituals that we are performing are actually European culture. But now they've been couched mm. and packaged as Christianity. The way we sing, for example, the way we dress, for example, the way we eat, for example, the way we celebrate our things, our holidays, our festivals, mm -hmm. our, 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 our Passovers, etc. Are, are these things, Easter's, are these things biblical? Christmas is. You have a lot of fat. Yes. Questions. Answer. If you can. We know says questions will need to be answered. But. We do, are we in the mindset to answer these questions? Are we in the mindset to answer any question for a matter of fact? Because we're in that mindset so long that even the question is a bother to me. Yes, when you hear these questions, you say, where are you asking questions for? That is really what is happening. So the question is still there. All of these religions, when they come with them religion, they come with a culture and then force you to go into the culture no matter what you say. If he's a Muslim, you go into the Arab man culture. If he's Christian, you go into the European culture. What is it that is allowing us? What is it that is causing us to keep on doing the same thing the same way every century in and out? Every century. You don't know say African have no friend. Africa do have no friend because all of them is going to benefit themselves half a wee. But how much time you going to hear we say that? How much time you going to hear we say that? We say that over and over like a record of Guan and Guan. And yet still we can't come to the understanding. So when we have decide to stop, we don't have there all the while. One of them they don't have a year. And they have to say, why? You like Rasta? It's like I used to say, we don't make the point that, you know, a man say, if the world had listened, speaking of I used to say, him say, if the world had listened to that little man, World War II might have never begun. And we are saying the same thing about Rasta. If Jamaica was listening to the Rasta far right, we are going to know that never happened. I would mean that, I would genuinely believe that. If they must listen to the Rasta man over the years, them there. We are going to know that never happened. 
Because even though we don't have no big mask, I can't do them mask. We still was able to project Rastafari. And even though we never have no, no, no hospital, we still did not show the people them how to keep themselves healthy. We never have no hospital. We never have no place where you can go and say, this is a Rastafari temple where you can go and get healing like a, a tram. But we project that. And we did not show the people them how to eat food properly, how to take care of themselves. But them never listen. Never listen. So we don't know if the gate get closed and they ask gone through already. Because many more to come, many more to see what we are saying. Many more to see it. And when we say see what we are saying, we really mean see what we are saying and not hear what we are saying. Because some people are here and them not listen. So we who have this microphone project that and whosoever will may come. Because we know say our struggle is a just struggle, just cause. Just cause. And the ones them I get, it's like we are take backward step. Even though the thing out there in the year, we are take backward step. It seems as if we now go forward, while everybody else is going forward. Everybody I move forward. We are the only set of people who seem to be going backward, continuously. Because we have some little mythology and some little illusion. Illusion. We see people know what all them are turn to them ancestor and all this talk. I am man, sister. I no one no out there. Prayers is for the people them who pray. It has nothing to do with the person who you pray for or pray to. When somebody pray, him satisfying him own self. Internally, him satisfying himself. It has nothing to do with you know, like a man say, I pray that you get better, you know. Prayer not gonna make him get better. Some people don't like you when you say that, but it's true. Prayer not gonna make you get better. You see, a physician. I you do the things them? Yes, I you do the things them to make the thing work out. And we, we are clear that. Yes, we we'll continue what we have said. We have said, you know, every day people are prayer. Our people are called up our ancestor. Prayer is just like you call up our ancestor. Ancestor is like your prayer. Because your prayer and a prayer. Your prayer said this happened and that will happen. If it happen, you say I show you pray. If it don't happen, you say the, 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 the devil trang. It's confusion in the mind. And when you always know, you know, say prayer is for you. Prayer is not an outward thing, you know, it's an inside thing in a yourself. It helps you. It helps to satisfy your feeling. That is what it does. Prayer is not to make things out there happen or don't happen. And that is what people are crying and are praying and I say, boy, I pray this and pray that and pray that. When a man meets in an accident, a car accident, you know, stand up over him and pray that him get up. You lift him up and cry him go to hospital. It's just that. You know what prayer go for certain people in the society? Yeah? When your man is sick, you say, boy, I pray a man miss you, say, boy, I pray that him, him find him. You know, your man gone to prison, you say, but I'm, 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 not, I'm not guilty, you know. I pray that him come out of prison quick. You think that I'm going to make him come out quick because I have prayer. And that is why the whole of them church people come together every year and I tell them I pray that crime go down, that crime cease. You hear the Prime Minister a call for divine intervention, that the Lord will bring divine intervention. You hear a bunch in a call for the same thing. It don't have nothing to do with nothing more than you have to make that happen. Anything where you pray for, and you have to make it happen. If you want a million dollars, you go work for that. You think say you gotta just come because your prayer. Prayer is to satisfy the person or the people who pray. It has nothing to do with the something outside of you that you are praying for. It's just simple. It's just simple. If you don't believe me, look on the prayer. Look on all the prayer where I go up all over the place. All the prayer where it's going up all over the place and see if things is better because everybody is praying this and praying that. No. I'm not blind. And I'm not cruel. But I'm talking about evidence. Evidence. What is the evidence to show me, say, because somebody pray, 
for somebody in an accident is because in prayer why the person get better people want you to believe that and him truly some people believe that themselves but if that was the case when does prayer help somebody and when them don't help somebody what kind of selective help that prayer is a selective thing you mean say you you pray and the thing where you pray for don't happen it means you don't believe enough you're not strong enough you don't have no faith enough People pray for go pass exam. You think they can go sit down and don't study and just pray and pass the exam. There's a story about the man who every day he get up and I talk about God, please make a win the lottery, please make a win the lottery, God. Every week he get up in my prayer for win the lottery. And God God answer him. God say, Watch your man, why don't you buy a ticket? Go buy a ticket and take and take a chance and wear it. Don't come to me every day where you are praying for buy. For, for, for me, or you have a win if you don't have a ticket. If you don't have a ticket, you don't have a chance. So, all the prayer where you are praying, I'm going to make you win the lottery. And that is where you go, a man buy a race and say, A few months ago, win because I prayed last night. Some people go to Parson, they more have, have visa. Parson said, Just pray, man, and me pray for you. When you go there, you must get it. The Lord will make the, 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 the visa prosecute. When you go there, you don't get it. Your begs. Because the Parson tell you, Say, Pray. Pray, you get visa. And that is the way of how it go. Prayer is for you. Prayer is for the person who prayer. Prayer prayers don't change events. Prayers don't change event. And that when I say no, it's a stubborn statement because a whole lot of people can't take that reason there. But may I say it anywhere. May I say it anywhere. If prayers was helping, the world wouldn't be a place like waiting now, you know. If what we was doing, I talk about we are praying, and I pray that the earth wouldn't be not this problem. Because man has created the problem. And you can't pray with the problem. You have to take physical, you have to take a lot of other things to get rid of the problem. Crime then in Jamaica, I think you can't pray with the crime. Pray with crime. You have to do something. Do, do. Feet alone not going to go, go get with the thing, get make the thing move. You know, your man's feet can move mountains. You have to get a bulldozer to move that. Man don't stand up and attack out. Why rain and fall, you know? And then him say, Why well, mother pray so the rain stop falling, you know? And the rain stop falling. Say, them don't know some man. See, they so prayer strong. Prayer make the rain stop fall. That is all them condition way. That is all them condition way. And if it's if it's lying, me I tell. Look upon it. Look upon the evidence. Look upon where I go on in the earth. And look where I go on in your life. Amongst your family. All the loved ones will move. If you didn't really want them move from you. When they move. All the children them. All the fathers and the mothers. Will pass away in your life. Where you pray say. Do. Make them get you that the cancer and all them something there. And if the cancer move here. So call you pray. Make the cancer move. Yes, people believe that. I mean, I say, they must believe it because it helped them to satisfy them feeling. Prayer is for the person who pray. That is what I say. Prayer is for the person who pray. That means say, if you pray for somebody who have cancer, and you say, please God, make the cancer move, and the cancer move, is you feel good. And the person who feel good because you have the cancer again. But it do have nothing to do with the prayer where you pray. Call me anything where you want, call me tomorrow morning. <laughs> anything. But be a sad by it. Be a sad by it. He thinks that you're a man of a race. A man of a race like all Usain Bolt. Usain Bolt a race now. And you see the move where he make, now, he make the sign of the cross and, and hold up him and in the ear and, and hold up. You think that make him win? Then look how much other people do it and not win. So what I say? Usain Bolt prayer reach God more than the other people them. When football when football a play and the two teams them go up the, the, the field and a prayer. You tell them not a pray for win. So when the other one lose, when the other one win a warm and true for them God not strong enough. Prayer only help the team who pray. It don't have nothing to do with them to win or lose. It don't have nothing to do with when them are lose. Oh you play the ball. Oh you play the ball. And sometimes you make a mistake. And you still win. 
Yeah, sometimes a man kick out the, 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 the ball and have seen goal. You think he didn't want to do that? If somebody in the audience has said, make him kick the ball and the goal, oh God, please make him kick the ball. You know, I'm going to kick the ball and say, see, the God powerful, my see. We pray to the man, kick the ball and I do. Him own goal and kick it and the goal, goal, goal. God is good. These are the things that them bring up, you know. Yeah, because you're not going to do that. 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 You're not so, I don't know. Because <laughs> we, we know people don't like you on the car this way. But I love Muta, you know, but the young man talk about Muta not believe in a God, you know. What kind of madness is that? Muta not believe in a God. How oh, you get that? Because I don't use the word God, because I say, which God you talk about or that you must ask me? And the last time I asked a man that he begs with me, because he say, Muta you believe in a God, and I say, which God? The man begs. They don't know say I have enough God. Even the Bible said, both the God in the Bible, thou shalt have no other God but me. I am a jealous God. You know see? So all that God knows they have other gods. So when you walk through the rain and you want to go out in your nice clothes, and you say, right, the rain are fall, man. Please make the rain stop. And the rain stop. You say, see, the God is great, man. God is great. Sun has shine bright. A man who has rain for fall. And rain now fall. To the woolly for rain fall. I don't know who pray make the woolly for rain fall. But rain a fall. Woolly for people who are rain for fall now. And look how long him a pray and rain ever fall. And now him stop pay rain a fall. And the man who are keeping big show weekend, him no want to rain fall. That's how it go. It's nature. You don't have no control over nature. None. You can't do certain things, but nature, you just a little minute speck in the scheme of the universe. That was, you know, say somebody just told me that, that <laughs> people have listened to the program, you know, but you imagine now, because you have some ones who claim consciousness, you know, and I talk about Africa, like you might live in a bubble about Africa, you know. I'm not to say I love Africa more than Jamaica had. I'm not getting at them little madness there and craziness, you know. Because I see man do some, something in Africa that I say, then how that I will help? How that I will help? You, 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 water, the same water problem. When you go to Nigeria, to Rated, the light like Nigeria have oil. Nigeria have oil in Rasta. And they have the biggest population in Africa. Yes, they have the biggest population in Africa. And them have island them thing there, and them have suffer from electrical. Every minute the light lock off. Everybody have a big generator in their yard. Everybody in a Nigeria have generator in them yard. I'm not telling you about how that possible. I'm not telling you about when you go to Yoruba, I'm not telling you Yoruba land, I'm not telling you about where them can do and how them do this and do that. I'm not saying, yeah, but how you do that and you can't run electricity right there. You can't have electricity. Everybody have to have generator. So you have so much powers and a little thing like generator, you don't have no power in it. I'm a fighter only for people who are get to them conscious who are getting at the same little same little thing. The same little thing. That's why a man can't make a man free of Obia. And then tell you say, a devil this and devil that. Devil I'm not for doing Obia. Devil I'm not for doing Obia. Man are doing thing. And when you do pan it, really and truly now. Oh a man of work will be upon you. Oh a man of work will be upon you. Oh, man, oh, no, nobody can work over oh, for me. Nobody. Him could have definitely nine little more. I can't tell him after everything. I don't know that everything is African retention. We shall Jamaica. A man use it all more want to use it. It's just that when it reaches or no. White people are sure you said bad. You know for use it because black people used to use it for free themselves too. You never hear about bookman. Dirty bookman, we go ahead. What do you think what, what you think him do? You know, he's a tacky. A nanny. All of them people that you use certain who be aware. Well, it have nothing to do with nothing no more than frighten you, scare you, or kill you. It's like when the psychiatrist put your flea down in the coach and start to question you and him start to tell you everything about yourself. You have to wait, or him know that, or him know that. Because I'm asking you certain questions and I'm hear your answer and through me or your answer, I'm no say you have a problem in like your childhood and all them something. Like. It have nothing to do with death, it have nothing to do with no God. God is a concept. 
that is a concept where man have in their mind. And then him start to believe say anything will go to him say I got anything bad inside the devil. What 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 how devil how devil and God come in a human beings actions? Human beings are do them wickedness. And them are blame the devil and them are do it. People do good and them are say God and them are do it. Why are you giving over your goodness and your badness to something that you create in your mind? You create them things in your mind. And you give your power over to these positive and negative so-called thing. They talk about. Remember what they used to tell us: say, "Hell and eat the earth." And who give them something? Who make you believe that? Who make you believe say, "Heaven and the earth and, and, and God in the sky"? Who make you believe these things? If God is everywhere, why you have to look up for, for to talk to Him? Can somebody please enlighten me? I like some enlightenment. How did you get the concept that you're going to look up in the sky to talk to God when you say God is omnipresent? You know what omnipresent means? It means you're everywhere. So why would I want to look in the sky to praise God? Who gave us those thinking? They don't know why man look at the sky. Because man used to worship the sun. And the sun man looked upon as the creator and the giver of life. That is all the idea of looking at, looking at the sun and the sun become the sun of God. All of these things is written down from the years before Bible write. In the ancient Mesopotamian, in a Kemet and Ethiopia, all of these ancient places did have these concepts. And it trickled down and come right down in that modern day now. That man anthropomorphized God and make God become like a man. The personality of a man. And say, E, 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 this and E, that. And if you say she, them say you're a devil. <laughs> if you say God is a her, they say God is her, her. She is this. If me was a woman, would I say God is a her? Or you mean? So why God must be a e, 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 e. And then now, the, the man who talk about the gender thing, because God now have no gender. So he might try to be like God now, say gender neutral. And everything can show me, I make every minute, this pride thing pop up on me, come watch her. Watch her, see there? The colors and everything, and I'm tell you about what is pride? Why this month is pride? How them get it from a computer? <laughs> As far watch out. Boy, the same ancient one. Look, really. How them get, I show them no, so, all right. They must spite me. They must spite me. Believe you me, they must spite me. From before the program start, I see pop up a come from a computer about pride. Gay pride, the and gay this and gay that. Them not say gay again, LGBTQ, RST, LLPT. Them really, but yes, so the idea, the concept of God where we have, we have to re examine it, we have to rethink it, we have to rethink it because it's not serving me. And if your God not serving you, something wrong, something wrong, because if God don't go why you serve him as a narcissistic God, if God create man in his own image, and then my turn and say, you must praise him, pray, 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 pray to him, praise him bow down before him. That is a man that said these things. Because that is how them used to treat the pharaohs. That is how them used to treat the Caesars. Because you have all the women who make herself God too. Because them Cleopatra, Cleopatra who married Julius Caesar, Mark Anthony. She was a God king. A, a woman king, I should I say. She was a woman king, woman emperor. Woman pharaoh. She was a pharaoh. She was a woman who was a pharaoh. Cleopatra me talk about the woman that would turn the whole of the Eastern world upside down. Control Caesar, control Mark Anthony, all them where they have picked me for them and all them things there. Them used to see God in the sun, sun Ra, Amen Ra. That's why when the Christian them say, Amen, them don't even know says Amen, Amen. And they, and they end the, all of the Psalms, the man, the prayer. How you think that come out? How that come out? You think it just come out just a true Christian? Christian have nothing to do with it. Christian adapt these things. A man run me down in a, in a true valley the other day, one little half China man, I know where he come from. The man say, oh man, lick against Christian, so I have cross on my neck. I say, you see me with cross on my neck. For sure, illiterate man is a, not for sure the man say, not a cross expression, it's an ankh. You know what an ankh is? He say, so it's not a cross. I say, no, it's not a cross. You ever see cross look like? Oh, oh, well, well. The man say, 
You see why you're the man of the, the, the place, you know, that everybody look for the man and smile. Because they must say, wait, I want to talk to him out or so. I never see this man in my life, but him here like how me attack now. Obviously, me like how me attack. Well, if people don't like how me attack, but me attack how me attack. You know, see? And the man, well, if the man could have taken one of the, the things that lick me down in there, would have lick me down to write it. The man started to curse me and tell me about how I got dead this and I got dead that. that. Me I said, right, it. The man hit me like a dose of poison. Two man is to me ready, and two man is to the ready, and I want to turn it off when he hear me. He was a masochist. He loved pain. <laughs> right, it, boy. I tell you. And me go through this so every year. Years me I go through this. Years me I go through this. Why me bring up this tonight? Because I have a phone. That is why I bring up this tonight, the phone. And I see it. People stop me in the market, people stop me everywhere. So I'm all the man that clean up the road on this so. They have this God's argument, if you want me to answer him, I'm not answering him, you know. And the man said, the people them say, I'm not believing in God. And I said, so which God you talk about, Bridget? Which one of them you not believe in? They said, you know what I mean? Which one of them? What do you mean? Which one? The God of the heaven and the earth. I said, which one? Because in the Greeks, there was Zeus. Zeus had many sons, Hercules and all these people was him son. God changed in many different cultures. You have a place where you don't use God. Zeus was the God of all gods. You think you didn't hear any other God that talked about more than Zeus? You hear anybody that talked about Zeus now? You go to Greece to and come like a third world country. And Greece is where all them cats can say and all them things they come from. Yeah, man, Greece. Greece is like a little country now. We have no significant more than tourist attraction. Rome. Rome follow Greece. In a whole heap of concept. That is how Rome now come control up the, the Christian world. Marketing and Syria and Turkey and them places. Control up the Christian world. And all of the things them, most of the things them we believe in are now. We Christian believe in are Rome and give them it. It no come from no people in a Jerusalem where they don't walk up and down with fishermen and all them something. A Rome give them it. And we have it just on our own. It enslave we. A white man God, we are worship, and don't ever realize it. And we hold on for him more than we hold on for anything else. We hold on for him like anything else. And when we look on the history of that, it not helps us dig deep and deeper in a pit. We have to rethink the concept of God where we have as African people. May I say that non apologetically. We have to rethink it. Come on, I'll turn Isaac Lassie in a Christian God too. I just have nothing to do with Christian God more than him declare Christianity. Him declare Christianity. I now declare Christianity because him declare Christianity. So a man have to just know, say, he might do what he might do, but me want to know if it will help the nation, if it will help him. And if it will help you, continue doing it. If it will help you, continue doing it. But don't come put it for me, you know, like say, me must do it same like you. No, that's where it go. That's where it go. So many leaves, one tree. So many river, one sea. All the name in the water, them and the name of the water, them are the same sea. You go down to South Africa, the Atlantic Ocean, and the Indian Ocean, giant up right down at the Cape. I stand up my bridging house, and I look down there, and I say, but look up, I don't see no difference between the left side of the water and the right side of the water. Why do they call one side? Indian Ocean and call the other side Atlantic Ocean. A man, a man I call them things the way they call it. A man I call it where they want to call it. Then who call South, South Africa, South Africa? And Northern Africa, North Africa. A man I do that. Oh, you know, so the South Africa is South. South of where? Yes, I don't say it sounds crazy, but a reality, reality. And at them really we have to start thinking because they confuse up the whole thing. We are bringing clarity to the, to the thing right now, yes. That's why they never like Rasta. Because Rasta comes with something different, totally different. You know what I'm saying? And when some Rasta now realize him now get nowhere, him start to sickle down in him old time we a Christian we are, you know, do certain things where him feel like, yeah. And then him start to look on you now, who are meant to him the whole time we him say, You're a madman. <laughs> Yeah, well, we are the maddest man in Jamaica. This is the cutting edge. Once we'll be back here, little more, with the stepping razor, the art of war. We want to heal up. Shane Clark, trust me. 
And she and Clark, I work with you right now, you know. Yeah, when I say work with you, it's a bigger work, I talk about, I talk about. My bridging, 30 years I'm going. I'm going to more to. But with there, with the cutting edge, we're not going to play that again. <laughs> we're going to play a gold show that come forward tomorrow. So we could find a good gold show and have to go to it. We could say, all right. Uh, I'm going to find a, a nice show. I don't know if I'm going to find before 2 o'clock. <laughs> ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going to tell you the things that I have to put up with. The things that I have to put up with on this program with people. Yeah, but I don't know how to deal with it. After 30 years, I must know how to deal with it, man. I don't have to raise my blood pressure. I don't have to make them raise my blood pressure, man. Trust me. I have a family, I have friends, I have a wife and everything, so I'm not going to make them raise my blood pressure. The informative information presented in this video is motivational and is positively aimed at inspiring, educating and entertaining the viewers with the cutting edge of critical reasoning. If you enjoy the contents on the Black Radar YouTube channel, please consider subscribing to show your support.